Welcome back guys, this is Always back with another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about functional programming in JavaScript. Now functional programming has become a really hot topic in JavaScript world. Few years ago, very few JavaScript programmers even know what functional programming is. Now in this video, we are going to talk about core concept of functional programming and in the later videos, I'll be jumping into WebStorm and showing you some example. Now let's talk about what is a functional programming. So functional programming is the process of building software by composing pure functions. A wide shade state, a wide immutable data has no side effect. Now functional programming is a declarative rather than imperative and application state flows through a pure function. Contrast with object oriented programming where application state is usually shade and collocated with objects and method. Functional programming is a programming paradigm, meaning that it has a way of thinking about software construction based on some fundamental defining principles. Now, functional code tends to be more concise, more predictable, and easier to test than object-oriented code. The hardest part is wrapping your head around with all the unfamiliar vocabulary. The first, pure functions. Functions composition, a wide shade state, a wide mutating state, a wide side effect. In other words, if you want to know what functional programming means, in practice, you have to start with an understanding of those core concepts. Now, a pure function uh, is a function which is given the same input, always return the same output, and has no side effect. Pure functions have a lot of properties that are important in functional programming, including a referential transparency, and you can replace a function call with its resulting value without changing the meaning of a program. Next topic we have is a function composition. Let's talk about that now. Now, function composition is a process of combining two or more functions in order to produce a new function or perform some computation. Very simple. Next concept we're going to talk about is shade state. Well, shade state is any variable object or memory space that exists in a shade scope or as a property of an object being passed between scope. A shade scope can include global scope or closure scope, often in object-oriented programming. Well, objects are shade between scopes by adding properties to other objects. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, a computer game might have a master game object with character and a game items stored as properties owned by or maybe that object. So functional programming a wide shade state instead of relying on immutable data structure and pure calculation to derive new data from existing data. So the problem with the shade set is that in order to understand the effects of a function, you have to know the entire history of even shade variable that a function uses or effects. Imagine you have a user object which needs saving. Your save user function makes a request to an API on a server. While that's happening, the user changes their profile picture with the updating avatar, right? And that triggers an another save function request so on save, the server sends back a conical user object that should replace whatever is in the memory in order to sync up with changes that happens on the server or response to other API call. So unfortunately, the second response get received before the first response. So when the first uh, response get returned, the new profile picture gets wiped out in memory and replaced with the old one. So this is an example of a race condition, a very common bug associated with shade state. Next topic we have is immutability. Now immutability is, uh, is let's say an immutable object is an object that can't be modified. Very simple definition. So when you create an object which cannot change, that is called immutable object. And in contrast, a mutable object is an object which can be modified after it is created. Immutability is a central concept of functional programming because without it, the data flows in your program is loosey and state history abandons and strange bug can creep into your software 
and so many other things, right? So it is important to consider this core concept. Next topic we're going to talk about is side effects. What do you mean by side effect, right? You're probably thinking, what is a side effect? All right, let's look at side effect. Now, this is the definition of side effect. Let me read it for you. A side effect is an application state change that is observable outside the call function other than its return value. Now, a lot of this concept, if they don't make sense, be patient. I'll be making a practice video or example videos where I would show you the examples of all of these concepts and I'll show you what are these uh, actually happening in a code. So just be patient and uh, stay connected with the, with well, stay updated with my channel. I'll be uploading a lot more videos on these concepts. So this is a side effect. Now, this, these are the core concepts of functional programming in JavaScript. And uh, yeah, so that's about this video, guys. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about actually showing you the proper code where I will explain all of these concepts with examples. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next one. And make sure to subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter at awaysmirza01 if you like. And we have a programmers uh, group on Facebook, which you can join if you need any help in programming. All right, so stay blessed. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.